So what we'll be covering is a lot of what the technology is, uh, what are the competing technologies currently in the market, uh, where is it in terms of expectations, uh, in terms of what it can do and what it cannot. Um, also kind of trying to understand what the constraints are uh, with the technology and then kind of have an overview of uh, you know, whether this is the right time to invest in this or what to expect out of this technology in the next near future. The BLA technology is like it's Bluetooth uh, low energy. Um, what it basically does, it's, it's a small uh, trans radio transmitter that it basically just transmits the location, uh, both uh, micro as uh, like major and minor IDs. Till now, what we've been trying to figure out is a lot of uh, geolocations uh, in the uh, ex like in the external sense. But when you come and do an indoor mapping, this is where it's very powerful, uh, and it's essentially used for two main things: uh, proximity estimation and geofencing. What that really means is trying to figure out how far a custom a consumer or a user is from a beacon, or uh, whether you fence an area around the beacon and say whether somebody entered or exited that. Uh, area. So like based on these two things, you can create a lot of experiences, a lot of uh, tagged uh, you know, user interfaces uh, with these. Uh, BLE, uh, it has kind of two main cornerstones right now, uh, which are being used to develop all the BLE applications. Uh, one is the iBeacon, and the other is the Eddy Stone. Uh, as always, iBeacon is the uh, format that has been given out by Apple. Uh, whereas Eddystone is, is something that Google came out with. Uh, both of them are fundamentally very, very different. Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest difference if, if you see is that iBeacon is a part of uh, Apple's core location API. What this means is that uh, in iBeacon, uh, the app can detect uh, a beacon even when it's not like right on your mobile or it's in, in actual uh, usage. Uh, whereas in uh, Eddystone, there are some constraints on how to use it. Uh, the other big benefit with Eddystone is uh, that uh, Eddystone is majorly geared towards uh, mobile websites and links. Uh, so iBeacon only works uh, essentially with the apps, whereas Eddystone kind of works with mobile links as well. So Google has kind of taken a long-term view of the fact that, hey, in the next five years, 10 years, uh, mobile apps uh, might not uh, be the thing, and it just might be mobile websites or mobile links. That's where Eddystone is pushing itself, whereas iBeacon is still inherently tied uh, within the mobile app architecture. Uh, so if, if in terms of uh, competing technologies, so uh, we un try to understand, uh, and this is specific uh, to understanding uh, technologies that can help you figure out the location of a user within a small indoor location, uh, not the outdoor location. Uh, for that, I think GPS is a very, very clear winner, uh, which, is, which is being used for across uh, the spectrum for uh, most of the apps. Uh, for that, uh, there are a bunch of technologies. Wi-Fi has come up with, uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance has come up with a technology called Wi-Fi Aware. Uh, there are a few uh, beacons that are being developed. So Bphonics is a, a company based out of India which, which has developed a Wi-Fi beacon, uh, which kind of, kind of works like a Bluetooth beacon, but it's somewhere uh, in the middle. I haven't tested that out, but I'm going to test it sometime soon. Uh, NFC, RFIDs, and Bluetooth technologies. Wi-Fi Aware and uh, it, it's, it's a pretty long range technology. You can uh, manage the range as, as much as you want. Uh, that is the one that probably is going to see a lot of usage uh, in mobile based uh, marketing or location based marketing. Uh, because if, if you go to, like, if you go close to a Starbucks or something, that's where kind of it doesn't matter whether you're 10 meters or 20 meters or 100 meters from it. It's, it's essentially the advertising and marketing space. Uh, the other thing that happens uh, in, in a lot of these technologies is how the communication actually happens, whether it's a one-way communication or a two-way communication. What that means is whether uh, the beacon can send a data packet to the app, and can the app send a data packet back to the beacon. Those are the two things that we need to understand. In case of Wi-Fi where there is a data communication both sides. So that, what that means is the app can send data packet to the beacon, as well as the beacon can send back the data packet to the app. Uh, what that creates is a lot of security concerns that need to be thought about in terms of a network. Uh, user pairing, uh, essentially what that means is when you're trying to use uh, that <coughs> particular network, uh, particular beacon, do you need some assistance or does, does a user need to take some action? Uh, in case of Wi-Fi and BLE, yes, uh, both a user needs to have his Bluetooth on. Uh, in terms of power, again, uh, some of these technologies uh, currently have 
uh, power systems integrated within the beacons. Uh, some do, some do not. But I think uh, long term, what, I, what, what we expect is uh, all these beacons will have inherent back batteries, uh, like the BLEs that they have. Uh, and uh, the battery life now in a lot of Bluetooth low energy beacons is as high as five to seven years, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. Uh, in terms of NFC and RFID, uh, they are absolutely like brilliant technologies which, are, which can be used very, very closely and can, can like even detect a micro location. Uh, but the biggest constraint <laughs> which, uh, with the adoption of NFC is that uh, Apple has reserved the NFC for a a a Apple Pay. Uh, that seems to be the biggest concern uh, because when we were trying to think about using uh, BLE or NFC, uh, we wanted to go and use NFC in, in one of the projects that I was trying to do. Uh, but the only reason that we kind of took a step back from NFC was the fact that Apple does not allow uh, anyone to use NFC for uh, any other app except Apple Pay. So that's where the constraint is. So in terms of the whole space, I think BLE kind of still seems to be uh, on the safer side because uh, it's a one-side communication. What that means is that the uh, beacon can only kind of send information to the app. There is no uh, trans uh, information transfer. So in that sense, <coughs> the security concerns for BLE technology are still limited, uh, are not as high as normal networks that you will see. Uh, in terms of potential usage, uh, beacons are being tried and tested in across the spectrum, um, especially in retail, um, stadium, restaurants, and hospitality. Uh, I had a chance to speak with um, senior executives from Staples, Macy's, and uh, a few other uh, startups and companies. Uh, there is a lot of investment going on, especially in retail, where people are trying to understand uh, how they can use uh, this technology to improve uh, store navigation, advertising, and couponing. Uh, and especially kind of increase the cross-sell, which means that once you have a user uh, inside uh, a retail chain, how do you make sure that the experience of the user is absolutely fantastic? And how do you make sure that you can sell a lot more stuff than he actually intended to buy? Basically, those are the key things that people are trying to figure out. Again, advertising and coupon is a part of it. Uh, stadium, uh, a lot of stadiums uh, have incorporated this technology. In fact, Deloitte uh, has been working with a bunch of firms, a uh, bunch of stadiums to actually go and implement these solutions. Uh, so in terms of ticketing, uh, the a Apple Pass is, is being used there. Uh, fan experience, again, uh, seat navigation um, in, in stadium shopping, a lot of memorabilia. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually being uh, tested and, and used in, in a bunch of stadiums. Um, in terms of restaurants, again, it has, it has a lot of uh, potential usage, again, trying to figure out where the order came from, from which table, and stuff like that. Uh, so ordering payment uh, is, is a huge, huge space. There are a lot of uh, payment firms, uh, Dash, and like I think a couple of other cover uh, who are actually trying to use uh, Bluetooth uh, energy beacons. Uh, and again, the goal here again is to make the user experience as uh, you know good as possible, and on the on the other hand, to kind of increase a lot of cross sell uh, with the restaurants. Uh, in terms of hospitality, again, check-ins, um, automatic check-ins, just access control to gyms and other facilities. So, like, this technology is seeing a lot of action um, uh, in the current uh, <coughs> space. Uh, and like, if you look at uh, the current status, uh, like, if if you look at the Gartner hype cycle, uh, it is actually right there at uh, the peak of expectations, uh, which is kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, what that means is people think that this technology is going to like deliver a lot of returns, and hence a lot of investment is being made in this technology. But I think what people do not understand is, is a lot of constraints that this technology comes with. Right now, it's, it's, it's going, undergoing a lot of uh, testing within uh, the markets that we spoke about. So the constraints. I think the biggest constraint uh, that you see with uh, Bluetooth, uh, the BLE beacons is, is first the Bluetooth adoption. Uh, the Bluetooth adoption rates uh, in US, in fact, are highest are among very, very high uh, as compared to other markets. Like It's about 20 to 30%. Uh, but that's the normal usage of Bluetooth. That is expected to increase as uh, you see an increase uh, in, in wearables, where people actually pair their uh, wearables with either their mobiles or with their cars and stuff like that. Uh, but that said, uh, my expectation is that people will be use, uh, willing to uh, switch on their Bluetooths given that the app actually delivers value for them. So I think value is, is, is a much, much bigger driver and constraint um, in, in, in this technology. Uh, because if, if, if the app is not delivering enough value, it, it kind of becomes a nuisance. Because think about it, 
uh, if you go to, if there are 50 beacons who are trying to send you messages again and again, it kind of just becomes an oversaturation, right? And that's a point where this technology kind of literally falls apart, even though it's well intended. So like systems have to be figured out uh, in terms of efficiency of messaging, inefficiency of what, how many message, messages do you send and what are the messages that need to go across uh, in, in the most like shortest uh, or the most valuable path. Uh, in terms of technical constraints, uh, there are still uh, constraints with the technology. Um, if, if you look at uh, <coughs> the actual technology within iBeacon, uh, so the, re the app and the uh, iBeacon actually reads uh, the pings after every one second. So like it's not instantaneous. There is some sort of a user lag when you actually try and use this technology. Uh, so in that sense, it's not a completely, uh, you know, perfect user experience, even in terms of the proximity ex estimation, it is just an estimation. Like people try and uh, f believe that you can actually figure out the exact distance, that's absolutely not true. Uh, and it also you need to understand is how the radio waves actually travel. <coughs> so uh, just the presence of uh, rain, the presence of other matter around you can actually change uh, how, what the proximity uh, it, it actually shows. So those are the constraints, practical constraints that we need to be really aware of while we're trying to implement. Uh, this technology. Uh, the last uh, concern that people uh, have kind of had with this technology is kind of around beacon security. Uh, it is not as high as other solid networks, but uh, there is still a constraint around you can mask a particular beacon and then just send a lot of mal malware. Uh, in conclusion, I think uh, Bluetooth uh, energy, uh, Bluetooth low energy technology is there, I think it's it's one of the solid contenders to completely transform uh, the experience. Uh, it has its constraints right now. I think it will probably go down uh, the uh, expectation hype, and then once integrated with the current apps and like mobile sites, I think there will be a system where uh, the chances of this technology coming out as the potential winner are pretty pretty high. Uh, and I think anyone who's trying to kind of who is in the service of customers or users, I think. I, I would strongly recommend that they go and uh, try this technology because there is a huge upside to how you can improve the customer experience.